How a great nation is persevered through the leadership and sacrifices of men and women who have served or are currently serving in our armed forces. We invite both veterans and current military personnel to stand. We thank you for your service to our country. Now to introduce the teams. For Hopkinton, number one, Tyler Doherty. Number 20, Robbie Pagliuca. Number 14, Ryan Kester. Number 22, Bobby McGuire. Number 9, Alex Barker Hook. Number 15, Chase Doherty. Number 3, Ethan DeYoung. Number 11, Patrick Breton. Number 13, Nate Bertucci Bissonnet. Number 6, Cam Jarrett. Number 17, Nick Paharic. Number 12, Ben McKenzie. Number 2, Steven Simos. Number 14, Drew Regatory. Number 18, Ronnie Sheamus. Number 19, Connor Kelly. Number 7, Brendan Kelly. Number 27, Jack Breslin. Number 8, Cole Glassburn. Number 10, Tommy Ambrosoni. And pitching number 5, Josh Fisher. For St. Mary's, number five, Zachary Fisher. Number six, Ethan Weiss. Number seven, Austin Baglietta. Number nine, Luke Smith. Number 10, Colby Magliozzi. Number 14, Lucas Fritz. Number 17, Corey Ouellette. Number 18, Dante D'Ambrosio. Number 22, Andrew Luciano. Number 23, Jackson Niccolo. Number 24, William Pagliera. Number 27, Lucas Rincon. Number 2, Colin Reddy. Number 16, Kyle Ouellet. Number 19, Jared Capola. Number 13, John Mulready. Number 3, Lee Pacheco. Number 33, DJ Vicenzo. Number 11, Terrence Moynihan. Number 15, Avon Cabral. Number 4, Richard Pagliuca. And pitching number 8, Bobby Alcock. And the bat boy, Adam Filo. The officials for today's game are James Blaine, Chris Meffin, and Joseph Williams. We now invite you all to stand for our national anthem, sung today by Kelsey Breslin, a Hopkinton High School student. Oh, say can we see by the dawn's early light what so proudly held at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight, o'er the ramparts he rose, where so gallantly streaming, and the rockets echoed, the bombs bursting in the gay pool. That our flag was still burning. 
Oh, who say does that star-spangled banner yet wave over the land of the free and the home of the brave? And there you have it, the introductions and the national anthem. Today's pitching matchup, Josh Fisher up against Bobby Alcock, two pitchers that have had fantastic seasons as we are just about set for the Division II State Championship here at Alumni Stadium in Lowell. Some fun facts about St. Mary's out of Lynn. They were state champions in 1987, 1988, and 2015 was the most recent state championship title for St. Mary's. Derek Dana is the head coach. He has coached the Spartans since 1988, and his assistants Tom Phila and Tom Donahue have also been coaches since 1988 as well. St. Mary's went 15 and 5 during the regular season, 3 and 0 oh in the playoffs, and St. Mary's has outscored opponents in the postseason 8 to 1. And also a former Red Sox outfielder uh, went to St. Mary's, and that outfielder goes by the name of Tony Canigliaro, a Red Sox legend. Uh, who attended St. Mary's High School. And there has also been five other former Major League Baseball players who have attended St. Mary's as well. Pitcher Bobby Elcock pitched a complete game shutout over Woburn in the Division II North sectional finals to help his team get to this point. Elcock has pitched 15 shutout innings with 15 strikeouts in two playoff games, allowing eight hits and two walks. He had seven strikeouts in the North sectional title game against Woburn. He has a fastball that ranges in the mid to high 80s. And last year, St. Mary's fell to Beverly in the quarterfinals, three to two in nine innings. So they are certainly glad to be at this point this year. As far as the Hillers, they are looking to win their first state championship since 2004. In the last 11 years, the Hillers have qualified for the playoffs all but one year. And just last season, they reached the sectional quarterfinals. They had an unfortunate eight inning loss to Duxbury, two to one. The year before that, a three to two loss to Greater New Bedford in nine innings in the sectional semifinals. So they are certainly happy to be here at the state championship game today their first state championship game since 2004, and they are certainly hoping to bring home another title. The Hillers have outscored opponents in the playoffs 31 to eight, and some of the hot hands in the Hillers lineup include Ben McKenzie, who's five for 12 overall in postseason play. He has scored five runs, and of course, Steve Simos, who is four for six overall, he has scored six runs in the postseason. And the Hillers, their offense has just been red hot, Larry, throughout the entirety of the playoffs. It's been a lot of fun to watch this team. Bombs away is the word of the day. Here's some trivia for you, Tom. Who was the last coach to coach Hopkins into a state title? Steve Simos. Steve Simos is the correct answer. You win all the money I have in my pocket. And he actually left the year after that. That is correct. true. He went to Holy Cross to be a hitting instructor. He's so well respected. He went to college at Boston College. Very good, a very, very good baseball program. He, uh, in his freshman year, he was the designated hitter. And according to my uh, research, he hit 386 as a junior, which is pretty dang good for a D1 program like that. And then he moved to Natick, got married, decided, was in management for a while, and then he wanted to get into teaching and coaching, and 
he got a job with Westwood Junior Varsity and made it over to Hopkinton, I think, in 1992 and coached for a number of years and brought some respectability back to the program and uh, ended up walking off with a 2004 state uh, championship. Lots of great players he coached. They'd all tell you he's a fabulous teacher, wants his players to play uh, by respecting their opponent. And you'll see you'll see that today. You won't you won't see anything crazy from the Hopkinton bench. All right. Well, the Hillers are the away team today. They are set to come up to the plate to face Bobby Alcock. Let's take a look at the Hillers lineup. Leading things off is the shortstop Ben McKenzie. The catcher Steve Simos hitting second. Batting third, the left fielder Drew Rancatori. Hitting cleanup, the third baseman Ronnie Sheamus. Batting fifth, the right fielder Connor Kelly. Hitting sixth, the first baseman, Brendan Kelly. DHing and hitting seventh is Jack Breslin. Cole Glasper in the second baseman, hitting eighth. And Tommy Ambersoni, the center fielder, hitting ninth. For the St. Mary's defense, we send it to Larry Sacklin. Over at third base today, Jared Capolo, shortstop, Avon Cabral. Colin Reddy at second base. Lee Pacheco over at first, left to right. Terrence Moynihan, Kyle Willett. Rich Pagliuca, no relation to Bobby. And the DH today is DJ Desenzo. Catching for the uh, Spartans is John McCready. And he's catching Bobby Alcock. There you have it. The St. Mary's defense. The Hillers set to come up to the plate and get this game started off. This game was postponed a couple of times. It was originally supposed to take place this past Thursday, and then it was moved to Friday night, and then the rain just continued. Seemed like it would never stop. So here we are on a beautiful Saturday afternoon in Lowell at Alumni Stadium, set for the Division II State Championship. John Ritz on camera, Tom Nappy, Larry Sacklad, happy to be with you on the call. And Larry, I don't know about you, but I'm pumped up for this game. Yeah, I, I, I couldn't sleep. I was up at 2. I caught you up at 3 a.m. I don't know what you're doing up, but you don't have to report into me. But you'll notice Bobby Alcock, he uses barely the right side of the rubber, and he throws across his body. So look for him to try and nibble at that outside corner. I saw that on tape, by the way, doing some scouting. But uh, that's what I got on him, fastball, curveball, like you mentioned. Uh, big kid, 6'4", around 215 pounds. But uh, Hopkins Hillers are a really good fastball hitting team, and that's what they got during their practices, fastballs and fastballs and fastballs. Speaking of good fastball hitters, here is Ben McKenzie stepping in, and we are underway here at Alumni Stadium. The first pitch is just high, 1-0. and oh. Ben McKenzie has been red hot in the playoffs, hoping to continue that on to the state championship game. And he'll take strike one, one and one. 77 degrees at game time. Nary a cloud in the sky. Good Wh crowd on hand today as well. Check swing, strike two. It's the nibble, outside corner. Well, Bobby Alcock has certainly been a tough pitcher to hit throughout the postseason. 15 straight shutout innings. Fouled away. Count remains one and two. So far, it's all outside corner, and he hasn't changed anything from what I saw on YouTube, so I guess it, that's his plan. Leg lift and the pitch. Swing and a miss. Out number one. His first break and pitch he threw today. He'll bring up Steve Simos, the catcher. Now batting number two, Steven Simos. He'll be facing a lot of lefties. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to step on you. He'll be facing a left-handed loaded lineup today, so he'll have to deal with that. Lefty Steve Simos steps in. Alcock deals high and outside, one and oh. I don't think there are any secrets here. I think St. Mary's has seen every one of the games that we've done over the last few years. And he'll get a piece of this one. Gloved by the shortstop, throw to first, no problem. Six to three, four out, number two. Drew Rancatori will step in, left fielder. Well, I think this game, Larry, is going to be all about which pitcher 
Starts to struggle first. Yeah, well, uh, Drew Rancatori, uh, we haven't put that up online for secrecy purposes, uh, has been dealing with a hamstring injury. Pretty good one, actually. He's been limping around, so we'll see what he does, what the athletic trainers have done with him to get him ready. Takes a breaking pitch for strike one. Alcock set to deliver. And this is up the right side. Slow roller picked up by the second baseman. Throw to first, no problem. One, two, three, they go. To the bottom of the first, we go. You are tuned in to Hopkins and Hillers Baseball on HCAM. We are ready for the bottom of the first. Let's take a look at the St. Mary's Spartans lineup. Starting things off is the second baseman, Reddy Collin. Batting second is the center fielder, Kyle Willette. Hitting third is the third baseman, Jared Coppola. Hitting cleanup is the catcher, John Mulready. Batting fifth is the first baseman, Lee Pacheco. Hitting sixth is the DH, DJ Delenso. Hitting seventh is the left fielder, Terrence Moynihan. Hitting eighth is the shortstop, Aiden Cabral. And hitting ninth is the right fielder, Rich Pagliuca for the Spartans of St. Mary's in Lynn. And now for the Hillers defense here is Larry Sacklad. Ronnie Sheamus is at third base. Shortstop, Captain Ben McKenzie. At short, shortstop, uh, number eight, Cole Glasper at second base. Captain Brendan Kelly at first base, left to right. Drew Rancatori, Tommy Ambrosoni, Connor Kelly in right. right. Captain Steve Simos behind the plate, catching Josh Fisher today. Josh Fisher last pitched against Stoughton, and he pitched a wonderful game. And he has been red hot on the mound as of late. Sheamus playing in. Uh, Going to try and take the bunt away. Ready, Collins steps in and takes a strike. Josh Fisher pitching from the far left-hand side of the rubber, opposite Alcock. Wind up and the pitch. And there for a strike. 0 oh and 2. It's all about confidence with Josh Fisher. If he gets in a groove, he'll do just fine. If he's a sophomore, it's a big situation for him. 1 and 2 count now. Set to deliver. That is fouled off. Count remains one and two. Gave him his first look at a breaking pitch. Well, it's been all about Brendan Kelly and Josh Fisher pitching wise in the postseason. They've been the two most reliable starters for the Hillers, and they've certainly been very reliable. A two and two count now. So far, St. Mary's is winning the boisterous contest from their dugout. Wind up and the pitch. Down low, full count. Fisher pitched six shutout innings in that win against Stoughton. Over in the neutral site of Stoughton High School. Wind up and the pitch, and he walked him. So the lead man on for the Spartans, and that'll bring up Kyle Ouellette, the center fielder. St. Mary's doesn't know it, but Josh Fisher has an unbelievable pickoff move. They've not seen any tape on that. He grabbed two guys consecutively at Stoughton. Runner with a bit of a lead at first. There's a bunt, and it's fouled away. Oh, and one. Coach Simos had the boys doing a lot of film work, film work during the rain. Went over everything. All defensive positioning. Checking at first, and the ball gets away. The runner will stay put, as Brennan Kelly is quick to get to it. An 0-1 count on Kyle Willett. Ronnie Sheamus playing really shallow at third base. Right on top of the hitter. 
Wind up and the pitch. Down low. Fisher's just got to work out of these first inning jitters like I do. Call in with a bit of a lead at first, and he picked him off to throw to second. They got him in a pickle now. Back to Kelly. Kelly's going to try to track him down. Now the throw over to second base. And now back to first. And Fisher is going to lay the tag on him. And there it is, that terrific pickoff move. All right, my critique is that's too many throws, but we'll take the out right here. And uh, they just got the surprise, surprise, surprise. The Josh Fisher pickoff move. We'll, we'll see how much of a lead the Spartans runners will take from here on out now. The cat's out of the bag. The pitcher has a great <laughs> pickoff move. Inside, two and one. Well, we got a competent scoreboard operator today, Tom. That's a blessing. It certainly is. Leg lift and the pitch, and that's fouled off. Two and two. Ball comes in the window. Don't worry about it. I'll put my par out there for you. Oh, that's good to know. Thank you. I don't believe you. But. Okay. <laughs> Wind's blowing from left to right. Wind up and the pitch. And this is hit in the air. Right side foul. That was towards the wall out there. This press box uh, seems very familiar to me, Tom. Yeah, we were here last summer for District 5 play for Ashland Legion Baseball. And unfortunately, they did not fare very well in the games that th took place here. Wind up and the pitch. That's fouled away. It's all right. There was a fast food place on the way home. Ashland Legion Baseball also in action this weekend playing in the Shamrock Classic Tournament over in Pawtucket, Rhode Island. Wind up and the pitch. Just high. For you golf fans, Keegan Bradley is two strokes off the lead. PGA Tournament going on this weekend. The Hopkin and graduate. Full count pitch here. And this is up the right side. Picked up by Glasper and throw to first. Not a problem. Four to three, four out number two. I'll bring up Jared Capola, the third baseman. Now batting number 19, Jared Capola. That ball was hit too slowly. Thank God for the pick uh, for the pickoff. They wouldn't have been able to turn two on that one. Boys basketball head coach Tom Keen is here in attendance. Support the Hillers baseball team. Perfect afternoon for some state championship baseball. One and oh. Principal Evan Bishop is here. Athletic Director D. King also in attendance. I think we'll have a few celebrities here today. Up the right side, could be trouble, and that's gone. Or no, excuse me, it was off the top of the wall, it looked like. Yeah. So it'll be a long single. That was very close to leaving the ballpark. Yeah, they say the number three and four hitters are hit with this lineup are the ones you really got to bear down on. And it is a short right field out there in that corner. It's 380 to right center, but more towards the right. It's substantially less than that. Over towards center field, it's 365. There's a strike. Just caught the outside corner. Runner with a bit of a lead at first. And this is up the middle, back to Fisher. Throw to first, not a problem. One to three for out number three. We'll head to the top of the second. We are scoreless here in Lowell. You are tuned in to Hiller's State Championship Baseball on HCAM. Top of the second inning, due up for the Hillers. Four, five, and six. Ronnie Seamus, Connor Kelly, and Brendan Kelly. Now batting number 18, Ronnie Seamus. Seamus has hit well. In the postseason. Last game he struggled a little bit. Went over four in the Westwood game, but the game before that he went 
two for two and scored three runs. Was also hit by a pitch, and that was against Stoughton. Rumor has it we've got an international viewer all the way from Spain, last year's captain, Zach Sosetsky. That pitch in there for a strike. A lot of movement on that one. The 0 1. Strike two. Alcock just pounding that strike zone. 2017 Tri Valley All Star captain or MVP, Alex Reynolds in the house. Outside. One and two. No chase there. It was too far outside. Well, both of these pitchers have had some good rest. It's been. Exactly one week since the Hillers and St. Mary's last played. Two and two now. Coach Matt Anderson was pitching to these kids behind the L screen from about 50 feet away. He's got a rubber arm, supposedly. He's trying to get it up to 85. The 2-2. Two -two. Yeah. Outside. Full count. I like this ump. I like him a lot. <laughs> that was a little bit outside, though. It certainly was. Wind up and the pitch. And this is up the right side, takes a couple hops, and it's bobbled by the second baseman, and Sheamus is going to beat it out. Sheamus reaches on the error. A cue shot, right off the end of the bat. Second baseman couldn't handle it. Now bring up Connor Kelly. Connor Kelly. I gave the error there, Larry, what do you think? My middle name is Homer. You never asked me what my middle name was. I, I give him a base hit for the books. Real life, that's a big E, E4. Elcock working from the stretch. Sheamus with a slight lead at first. There's a bunt, and it's over the backstop. Look out, everybody. 0 oh and 1. The great uh, Lou Merloni's sister, Jill Merloni, is in the house. Lou was at the breakfast, MIA breakfast yesterday, giving a speech to uh, the Hopkins and captains, Framingham's own Lou Merloni. Sheamus is going to slide back safe. Not a great move compared to Fisher's. I don't think anyone has the move that Fisher does. Yeah, but you should never, ever, ever get picked off by a righty. Leg left and the pitch. There's strike two. Brendan Kelly do up next. Connor Kelly has hit very well as of late. Been an RBI machine. Against Westwood, he had four RBIs in that game. And he went three for four at the plate. And he'll get a piece of this one up the left side, picked up by the shortstop, throw to second for one, over to first, not in time. So Kelly reaches on the force out. Six to four, force out. One away, and that'll bring up yeah, Brendan Kelly, seven, the first baseman. Brendan Kelly. Well, they haven't seen him recently. He's had a couple of 400 foot uh, pokes that are in the can, so to speak, to use Hollywood uh, talk. Real key will be to see what the Alcock can do the second and third time through the order. That pitch is low, runner taking off from first, throw to second is high, and it gets into the outfield. Connor Kelly will stay put at second with the stolen bag. So what else is new with Coach Simos? Well, I have a feeling runs are going to be tough to come by in this game, so I think both coaches are really going to try to manufacture some runs. I don't think there's a better tactician in the state than Steve Simos. Brennan Kelly is 3-4-8 at the plate in the postseason. Well, Alcock has just the tiniest difference when he pitches out of the stretch with a runner on. A large lead at second for Kelly. There's a strike. 0-2 on Brendan Kelly. Connor Kelly over at second base. Got a feeling uh, Alcock is going to break out his breaker. 
One out in the inning for the Hillers with a runner in scoring position. An 0-2 count to Brennan Kelly. Connor trying to play some head games with Alcock as this is up the left side. Fair ball picked up by the third baseman. Throw to first in time. And now Connor Kelly was going to head to third. Now they got him in a pickle. Throw back to second. He slides. He's out. And that'll end the inning. Not what you want to do in that situation. But three up, three down. It ends up being for the Hillers. We'll head to the bottom of the second. We are scoreless in this state championship game on H Camp. Bottom of the second inning. Do up for St. Mary's. It is five, six, and seven. Lee Pacheco, DJ Delenso, and Terrence Moynihan. Pacheco steps in, wind up in the pitch from Fisher, in there for a strike. That was a get me over fastball. I'm really impressed with the uh, crowd. Looks like it's two to one Hillers. And this is a, gonna take a couple hops up the left side, could be trouble, and the shortstop, Ben McKenzie, did not have a play on it, so Pacheco reaches with the infield base hit. They'll bring up DJ, DJ Delenso. So lead runner on for St. Mary's for the second time in this game. He's the DH for a reason. Looks like he doesn't have a good set of wheels there. Checking at first, runner back just safe. Josh has been known to go over to first base uh, three consecutive times. But again, bad things can happen. Runner continuing to test Fisher down low. One and oh count on Delenso. Fisher working from the stretch. Checking at first, runner back safe. Fisher certainly not afraid to throw over with his very good pickoff move. Yeah, you can bet the base umpires are looking for any type of Bach move. He deals, fouled off. One and one. Wind up and the pitch. In there, four strike two, grab the outer corner. One and two on the righty. Outfield not too deep. Check it at first, runner just back safe. Pacheco not taking too large of a lead for obvious reason. Line up and the pitch. Swing and a miss. Out number one. That'll bring up Terrence Moynihan. Scouting report was after you get past uh, the three and four hitter. Uh, not a whole lot there. I don't know whether they were paid scouts or uh, volunteers, but that's the that's report I got. Runner with a lead at first, wind up in the pitch, and therefore strike one. Brendan Kelly's gonna come in later on in the game to close things out unless uh, Josh Fisher's got a big, big lead. Pacheco continuing to take a lead off of first, throw over, he's back safe. Nice scoop up there by Brendan Kelly. Brendan's gonna get his uniform dirty, anything in the dirt, he doesn't want anything to to get by him and give up a free base. Looks like Fisher has settled down. Wind up and the pitch outside. Brennan Kelly certainly ready to pitch. Shall Fisher run into any trouble? Connor Kelly playing fairly shallow in right field and Tommy Ambersoni Shallow in center. The 1-1. Swing and a miss. 
Had him fooled with that one, one and two. Climb the ladder with that pitch. Or as you say, upstairs. <laughs> Climb the stairs. Leg lift and the pitch outside. Two and two. Fisher's gone as much as 95 pitches in a game. So he's been stretched out. Pacheco with a lead. Fisher deals. Hit high in the air to right field. And it's caught by Connor Kelly for out number two. Perfectly positioned out there, playing shallow. Now bad in the right. They'll bring up Eden Cabral, Eden the shortstop. Cabral. I think Coach Simos owes you a gift certificate to something for passing on some video. <laughs> he could scout St. Mary's. I didn't do that, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Fisher deals, there's a strike. Oh, and one on Cabral. Looks down third baseline at his coach. Derek Dana for the sign. Fisher deals outside. Looks like Desenzo didn't get cheated at the breakfast table, and this kid's been eating lean cuisine. Two different body types playing for St. Mary's. Fisher looks at first and deals. Runner taking off. Throw up by Simos. Got him. It's just about automatic with Steve Simos throwing up to second. What a great throw that was for out number three. Caught stealing is Lee Pacheco. We will head to the top of the third. We are scoreless on HCAM. Top of the third inning, due up for the Hillers, 7, 8, and 9. Jack Breslin, Cole Glassburn, and Tommy Ambersoni. And Breslin will step in first. He's the DH today. Last game it was Bobby Pagliuca as the DH. Alex Barker Hook also had a playoff game as the DH. Coach Simos getting everybody in there during this postseason run. Bobby Elcock has gone three up, three down in now each of the last two seven, innings. Jack and Breslin will step in. First time we've seen Breslin in a little while. Yeah. Don't be surprised if... Uh, Coach Simo sees the third baseman playing very deep over there that Breslin doesn't lay one down. He's willing to play base by base baseball, small ball, if you will. It's a shame Connor Kelly got caught in that rundown in the last inning, but what are you going to do? Top of the third, St. Mary's Hopkinton scoreless here in this Division II state championship game. This is up the middle, off the pitcher's glove. And the throw to first, not in time. And Breslin beats it out. That was a very tough uh, uh, no. <laughs> play to make, I would say. The base hit. That's a I'm base hit all the way. I'm giving him single on that one. Uh, but Alcock had a long reach to even get his glove on that one. He had to be Manute Bowl if he was going to try and get that one. That had some bounce to it. Certainly did. Cole Glassburn will step in. He went one for two and scored a run against Westwood in the sectional finals game. And this is up the left side, fair ball, throw to first. They got him, but advancing a second is Breslin. So a sacrifice bunt there for Glassburn. That's Simos ball, Robbie Pagliuca and a pinch hit for Tommy Ambersoni. Nice bunt laid down by Cole Glassburn. Ben McKenzie on deck. Pagliuca will step in a pinch hit for Amber Sony. Ah, the best athlete to ever come out of Hopkins and High is here in the house. Will Abbott. And Amber Sony did uh, recently Robert hurt his Luka. hand after he was hit by a pitch. He broke it, actually. So hopefully uh, we'll be able to stay in the game, but we'll have to wait and see. 
Line up and the pitch. Swing and a miss. A nasty breaking pitch there. Breslin over at second base. One out in the inning. Left fielder playing very shallow for Robbie. He's kind of a clutch kid. That's why he's my favorite player. Pitch to Pagliuca. Down low. Good take by Robbie. Good take. And McKenzie do up next. It'll be the top of the order for the Hillers after Pagliuca. I guarantee the left fielder won't be standing where he is with Ben up at the plate. Breslin with a slight lead at second. And this is fouled off. One and two. Stands nearly full here and I would say the Hopkinton fans what number of the St. Mary's fans today? Yep, two to one, I think. And you have to pay to get in because the AMIA needs the money. Of course. How, how much did we pay to get in? Or nothing. Oh, it's 600 bucks if we wanted to do it live, right? I'm not sure. They're just money collectors. Well, they got to fund these tournaments somehow. Yeah. <laughs> Wind up and the pitch. And this is foul. Gonna walk it off. He's a tough kid though. He was a field goal kicker for the Hopkins and Hellers football team last couple of years. Did a very good job in that role. But he can't hit with his feet. Only with the bat. Alcock from the stretch. Wind up and the pitch. And this is hit in the air, right side foul. One and two remains the count. He's going to University of Massachusetts at Amherst next year. Mr. Pags. Along with 30 other Hillers. Breslin with a pretty substantial lead at second. This is hit in the air, foul territory. The third baseman lost it in the sun, and it'll drop. The count will remain one and two. Uh, you know, he's got uh, sunglasses on his visor. I would suggest he might uh, put them on. What do you think, Tom? I think so. It might be a good call there. That's like uh, $150 worth of Oakleys. Well, I should mention brand names, but... Pags has got another life there. Yep. That should have been an out. Big break there. Let's see if he can take advantage. The one, two. Fouled away. The battle continues. Well, this is certainly a great plate appearance for Pagliuca, making Alcock throw a substantial amount of pitches. Breslin dancing out there at second base. He's, he's not going anywhere. Line up and the pitch. Check swing. Did he hold? Yes. No. Or, not even close. All right. They will say he held, so it is ball two. From my vantage point anyway, not even close. You had one umpire say no, he didn't hold, and then the infield umpire said he held. And that outrules the initial call. There's three umpires for the state finals game. Typically there's two in a regular season situation. Check swing. No, he didn't. And oh. the umpire says strike three. Pagliuca disagrees. I disagree. That was. I disagree as well. The, maybe it's a makeup. Out number two, Ben number McKenzie number will row, step in. Ben McKenzie. The left fielder now taking three steps in. That's a very dangerous move. If you saw how far he hit the ball last week at Campanelli Stadium. Alcock set to deal. Outside. 
One and oh on McKenzie. Because he's throwing crossfire, he tends to jerk the ball. And he's trying to paint the outside corner. Sometimes he jerks it a little bit too far, and that's why that ended up in the left-handed batter's box. So he's working out there. Elcock deals. Outside. Nearly got away. Runner taking off. Heading to third. And they got him. So Breslin is caught stealing. And that's the second time a Hiller base runner has been caught stealing. And that'll wrap up the top of the third to the bottom of the third we go. We are scoreless on HCAN. Bottom of the third inning. 8-9 and 1 due up for St. Mary's of Lynn. Aiden Cabral, Rich Pagliuca, and Reddy Collin to face Josh Fisher. We are scoreless here, heading into the bottom of the third. Josh has faced one over, or will have faced one over the minimum. The Hillers did have a base runner in the top of the inning, but Breslin was caught stealing as he tried to hit a third on a bit of a wild pitch. First pitch from Fisher is ball one. Home plate umpire wasn't what buying what uh, Stevie Simos was selling. Jerked that pitch in. The 1-0, swing and a miss. One and one. Seen some nice plays from the Hillers, a pickoff and a stolen base. Throw up by Steve Simos. Nasty breaking pitch for strike two. All kinds of movement on that one. One and two. Another breaking pitch. This one just a bit high. Two and two. Not that Coach Simos is predictable, but if he calls a breaking pitch. There it is. Strike three. That was a bit of a quick pitch, I think, for those who are watching at home. One out in the inning, Rich Pagliuca, the right fielder, will step in. Well, the Hillers have had two base runners get caught stealing so far in this game. And I'll tell you, if they're not more careful on the bases, they're going to have a very difficult time in this one. Wind up and the pitch. Swing and a miss. Good location there. So Coach Simos, if he sees his pitcher's getting his breaking pitch over, he'll have him throw it back to back. With Brendan Kelly, he's been known to have him throw three straight breaking pitches. The 0-1. And that pitch got away from him. I think it slipped out of his hand. One and one. <laughs> Fortunately, no one was on base. Oh, might have got two bases on that one. I'd say so. It's a long ways to that backstop. And that bunt was down, I thought, but I guess he pulled it back just in time. Two and one. Seamus playing in. Try to take away that bunt. Fisher deals. Strike two. Two and two. Josh Fisher, very compact, smooth delivery. Down low, full count. Again, he sped up with that pitch. Fisher has walked one hitter so far today. And given up two hits, but no runs. And he'll walk this hitter. The one out walk to Pagliuca. It'll bring up Reddy Collin, the second baseman. Now batting, number two. Call it ready. Checking at first. Did they get him? No. Just back safe is Pagliuca. Pags is uh, hard as beating a little quick. He was almost. He was almost out there. Colin Reddy steps back in. In 
in there for a strike. Coach Simos calls all the pitches. Runner on with one out. Here's the 0 1 pitch. Inside. One and one. Stevie Simos, one of the better blocking and receiving catchers in the Tri Valley League. Runner with a slight lead, and that pitch is just inside. Two and one. Stevie Simos will be playing third or second base, my understanding is, up at uh, Bowdoin College, Brunswick, Maine. Check it at first. Runner back just safe. Fisher showing great composure for a sophomore in this pressure-packed situation, state championship game. Checking at first, and that one got away. The runner is going to advance to second, and they have to chase this down a long way. He's gonna try to go to third, and the runner will get there easily. Not what you want if you're the Hillers. An errant throw from Fisher. Allows Pagliuca to advance two bases. And Coach Simos wants a chat. One out in the inning for the Spartans. Runner on third now. So a strikeout here would be huge. As I mentioned earlier, bad things can happen. You go over to first base here too many times. Seamus will be moving in at third to take away any type of squeeze. Well, and that's the exact reason why the Spartans base runners are going to continue to test that pickoff move of Fisher. The one, two. There's a bunt for strike three. They got the runner and a pickle over at third and they got him. That was what Coach Simos went out to talk about. If he shows bunt, it's a repeat of the Stoughton game. They tried that same play, and Stevie Simos smelled it and smoked him out. So it's a 2-1 count on Colin Reddy. And now two outs in the inning, and the bases are clear. Well, base running has been a major story in this game so far. That pitch just low. I think that was a design play by Coach Simos. Throw it up and out of the strike zone. If they're going to try and squeeze, they'll miss it. And Stevie, you chase the runner back to third. Swing and a miss, and they get him with the strikeout as Simos lays the tag on ready for out number three. Josh Fisher with Three strikeouts so far in this game, and we are scoreless as we head to the top of the fourth on HCAM. Top of the fourth inning, Ben McKenzie now will step in. Ben McKenzie. Ben McKenzie, Steve Simos, Drew Rancatori do up. Top of the order for the Hillers. Alcock has pitched pretty well in this game. The Hillers did have a hitter reach scoring position in each of the two last innings, but so far, no runs have crossed. Strike one to McKenzie. Again, that left fielder is in so shallow. Not that I care, but. Alcock deals. 
And this is hit in the air over towards right center, and it's caught by the right fielder, who had to cover a lot of ground to get there. Out number one. Ball was tailing away from the center fielder. Right fielder called him off. Rich Pagliuca with a nice Steven catch Simos. for the Spartans. Steve Simos will step in. Brendan Kelly down in the Hiller bullpen warming up. Well, so far this game has been all about the pitchers, the base running, and some great defensive plays on both sides. Strike one. Ooh, a little generous. Fisher, if he goes out, will be facing a two, three, and four hitter, I think. Line up and the pitch. Fouled away, 0 oh and 2. We have four Hiller kids going to be playing baseball in college. Cole Glassburn, Stevie Simos, Ben McKenzie, Cole Glassburn. Leg lift and the pitch. Swing and a miss. Out number two. Well, it's rare to see Simo strike out, but it was a good pitch there by Elcock. And Drew Rankatori will step in. Why didn't you correct me? Brendan Kelly, not twice Cole Glassman. We saw Drew Rankatori try to leg out a ball hit on the ground, but that hamstring is just not happening for him. Leg lift and the pitch. Ball one. He'll be playing for Ashland post 77 this summer if he gets healthy. The 1 0 outside. You can see why Alcock's been so dominant. Time called. Fire calling time as a baseball got away. Two outs in the inning. Bases are clear for the Hillers. 2 0 pitch to Rankatori. Strike one. Rankatori grounded out in his only plate appearance. The 2 1. Swing and a miss. 2 and 2. Kelly warming up with the under the watchful eye of Mark Sanborn, former 2008 Eastern Mass All-Star, JV coach. Wind up and the pitch. Up the middle, takes a couple hops, gloved by the second baseman, throw to first, no problem. One, two, three, they go in the top of the fourth. To the bottom of the inning we go. You are tuned in to the Division II State Championship game on HCAM. Bottom of the fourth inning, two, three, and four do up for the St. Mary's Spartans. Kyle Willette, the center fielder, will start things off, followed by Jared Capilla and John Mulready. Wind up and the pitch from Fisher. Down low, one and oh. Again, Coach Simos is not going to concede a bunt. He's got Ronnie Seamus playing in. Just inside, says the home plate umpire. Two and oh. Fisher set to deal. A little high, I guess. Three and oh. I don't know what was wrong with that pitch. Wind up and the pitch. There's a strike. Three and one. Willette grounded out in his only plate appearance back in the first inning. There's a walk. So the lead runner on for the Spartans. It's the third time the lead runner has reached base. However. But no runs have scored as of yet. Jared Capilla will step in, the third baseman. He singled back in the first inning. I don't think he's going to be bunting. 
He'll get a piece of this one in the air, right side, and foul. To go past the wall in foul territory, 0 oh and 1. He almost had one out in the first inning, true? He did. Very same, close. Went, same spot. That was the long single, went off the top of the wall, right towards the top. It was very close to being out of the ballpark. Breaking pitch outside, one and one. A little slip there by Josh. He's had a couple of those today. Fans all the way down the right field line. Wind up and the pitch. There's a strike, one and two. Polo not happy with that. Rancatori playing very deep in left field. Ambersoni shading to right. Swing and a miss. Out number one. Yeah, sit down. John Mulready, the cleanup hitter and catcher, will step in. Now batting number 13, John Mulready. Fisher with four strikeouts so far in this game. Connor Kelly playing very, very deep in right field. And that's going to get away from Simos. The runner will advance to second. I don't know, pass ball or wild pitch on that one, Larry. And in the dirty, bounced it. Yeah, give him a wild pitch, I think. Base runner read that one perfectly. He read the angle down. We're going to get a pinch runner. Yeah. Looks like coming into the game is going to be Corey Willette to pinch run for Kyle. Hmm. So brother for brother. Well, there's two Kellys out there. You can't be uh, certain. Oh, I'm certain. Okay. <laughs> Who's going to draw first blood here, Tom? Wind up and the pitch. Hit in the air over to right field and caught. Runner from second is going to tag and advance to third, but there is two outs in the inning. They'll bring up Lee Pacheco, the first baseman. So Corey Willette over at third. And the fifth hitter in the lineup, Lee Pacheco will step in. He singled back in the second inning, but was caught stealing. I wonder with first base open, uh... Coach Simos is going to tell Josh to uh, try and pitch around this kid. And this is up the left side, and it'll trickle into left field, and St. Mary's leads it one to nothing. An RBI single for Lee Pacheco. Well, the Spartans have struck first. And now DJ Delenso, the DH, will step in. Now batting number 33, DJ Desenzo. I believe this St. Mary's group, they uh, get kids from all over that area sort of put together a team. Most of the uh, schools in their conference. Wind up and the pitch, fouled away. Like Austin Prep and those type of schools. Get a pay to get in. The 0-1, fouled into the backstop, 0-2. So the go-ahead run has been plated by the Spartans, a 1-0 lead here in the bottom of the fourth. Wind up and the pitch. Hit in the air, right side, foul out of play. Very late swing. About time to drop in a breaking pitch here. Senzo steps back in. Fisher delivers outside. Nice save there by Simos. One and two. There 
There's a runner at first, two outs. Wind up and the pitch. Breaking pitch up high, two and two. Well, Brennan Kelly is ready to go if Fisher shall run into more struggles. Of course, right now he is taking care of first base. That pitch outside, runner takes off, an easy steal for Pacheco. Delayed steal. Full count now on De Desenzo. Josh is just going to forget about that runner at second base and concentrate on the hitter. Wind up and the pitch. Swing and a miss. Four strike three. But St. Mary's plates a run. And they lead it one to nothing as we head to the top of the fifth on HCAM. Top of the fifth Nine, inning. Three, four, five, and six Ronnie due up for the Hillers. Ronnie Seamus, Connor Kelly, and Brandon Kelly to face Bobby Alcock, who has pitched quite a game so far. He's given up no runs, one hit. We'll see if this Hillers lineup can come alive. Alcock has now pitched 19 consecutive shutout innings this postseason. Wind up and the pitch. Hit in the air, foul out of play. These kids are playing for all the players since the championship season. It's like Johnny Pesky had to wait 58 years before he saw a championship. The 2005 club, 14 years since they've seen a state championship. Wind up and the pitch. Inside, one and one. Good take by Ronnie. Seamus reached on an error back in the second inning. The only error of the game for the Spartans. This is up the middle and gloved by the second baseman. Throw to first and he got him. Quite a play by the second baseman to get Ronnie Seamus for out number one. Now batting number 19, Connor Kelly. Colin Reddy was certainly throwing off balance there. Connor that, Kelly will step in. That base hit written all over it. Nice play by the second baseman. Well, the Spartans' defense has been a large part of their success. Wind up and the pitch. Outside. Pitching and defense, Tom. Pitching and defense. Absolutely. The 1 0. 2 and 0. Tony Kelly wants to make him throw a strike here. Two O pitch, strike one. Now he's going to swing away if he likes it. Kelly looks down towards Coach Simos. The two one outside. Base is clear, one out in the inning for the Hillers. Coach Simos talked to me at the beginning of the year. We spent an hour on the phone going through each player. He said, Larry, it's going to be a very special team. Certainly has been. Full count. Very high on Connor Kelly. I had never heard of him before, but now I know what he can do. Full count pitch, swing and a miss. Out number two. Brandon Kelly will step in. Now batting number seven, Brandon Kelly. 
Well, certainly no matter what happens in this game, the, the, what this Hillers team has accomplished is remarkable. A lot of players from lots of teams sitting home right now. Hillers are still playing. Exactly. To get to this level, it's not easy. Outside. Jack Whaley traveled all the way from Naples, Florida to attend this game. Was in a golf tournament in Connecticut, finished fifth. The 1 0. And this is up the left side, picked up by the shortstop, throw to first, no problem. A one, two, three, top of the fifth to the bottom of the inning we go. The Hiller is trailing one to nothing on H camp. Bottom of the fifth inning, seven, eight, and nine do up for St. Mary's. 11, Terrence, Terrence Moynihan, Aiden Cabral, and Rich Pagliuca. Josh Fisher remains in the game for the Hillers. One nothing Spartans lead as this is hit in the air foul. Oh and one. Well, when you look at the playoffs for both of these teams, there's been some very different numbers. The lineup and the pitch outside. The Hillers have outscored their opponents 31 to eight in the postseason. St. Mary's have outscored their opponents eight to one. So it's been all about pitching and defense for St. Mary's as this is a hit and foul territory and out of play. One and two. So the Spartans haven't had the hitting that the Hillers have had in the postseason, but they just have had tremendous pitching, mostly from Bobby Alcock. And maybe they faced some tremendous pitching in their particular division. Well, they certainly did. Division. Lined up and the pitch outside. Two and two. Be a quick hook for Coach Simos if Josh Fisher gets in trouble. And this is up the middle into center field it goes. So the lead runner has reached once again for the Spartans. Here's Captain Hook, I think. It's the fourth time this game the lead runner has reached for St. Mary's. And we'll see if Coach Simos takes the ball. Brennan Kelly would likely pitch next, and he is going to take the ball. Brennan Kelly will slide over from first base to take over on the mound. Actually, we'll just uh, wait and see what happens here. Uh, Ryan like maybe just a chat at the moment. No. Nope. It is. It's just a chat. Fisher's staying in the game. I thought he grabbed the baseball. Well, there. I thought he did too, but they may have been talking about uh, a couple of pickoff attempts over Not at first base. And I think that's a good move to leave Fisher in the game at this point. I'm not so sure. If something happens here, then I'd pull, but not yet. Checking at first, runner back safe. And easily. Moynihan doesn't look like he's going to take too big of a lead here. Amber Sony paying way over to right center. Check it out first, runner back. There's almost two right fielders, Tom. There is. <laughs> well, Rankatori can cover a lot of ground on that left side. No, he can't. <laughs> runner back. They're yelling Bach, and that's going to be it, I think. Second visit. So they will now make the pitching change, it appears, and he will indeed take the ball. A good performance by Josh Fisher, who pitched a strong four plus innings. But he will come out of the game and Brendan Kelly will take over on the mound. And with the pitching change, we'll take a timeout. You are tuned in to Hiller's Baseball on HCAM. 
Did you know there are other ways to reduce your pain besides taking medications? For example, mindfulness. I'm Dr. Mike Guidi, a family medicine doctor based in Essex County. I use mindfulness techniques with my own patients during office visits, and I'm here to tell you how you can prevent addiction. It is a way to train your brain to manage pain. Reducing your pain through mindfulness could mean you need less medication or a safer type of medication. It can also help you reduce your stress and recover from past trauma. That means you become less likely to develop an addiction, whether opioids, alcohol, or any other substance. In brain research, we scan people's brains before they start practicing mindfulness and after they've been practicing it daily for eight weeks. We see actual changes in the way their brains are wired. We see those people drawing more on their judgment and reasoning skills, resulting in safer behaviors. Massachusetts has great resources about effective mindfulness techniques. To find out more, go to massmed.org. Bottom of the fifth, a pitching change for the Hillers. Brendan Kelly slides over from first base to take over on the mound. Ryan Kester is the new first baseman for the Hillers. Aiden Cabral, the shortstop, will step in. Runner on first, no outs for the Spartans, who would love to add some insurance here. They'll watch the straight steal here. Kelly deals. And there's a strike throw over to first. They got him. The runner took off, and then he tried to turn back, but it was too late. He got back picked. Simos, once again. <laughs> it's amazing, isn't he? Certainly is. Perfect throw. What a pirouette by that runner. There's a strike. Oh, and two. Brendan pitching out of the full windup now. Down low. He's got that good slider. Once he snaps one off for a strike, watch Coach Simos call for it again. A one, two, outside. But as we've seen, he's a rhythm pitcher. Here's the two, two, fouled away. Oh, Mrs. Kelly <laughs> taking off from the stands and heading down the left field line. She's a nervous Nelly down there. I would imagine. Outside, full count. Not her husband, Brendan's dad. He's right in the mix. <laughs> full count pitch. Ball four. Cabral draws the walk. Rich Pagliuca will step in. Brendan doesn't have a very good move, so he'll hold the ball for a little Seven, bit longer. Seven, step Seven, off the in. back of the rubber. That's how he'll keep that runner from taking off. One out, runner on first. He's got a little greedy lead over there. Rich Pagliuca walked his only plate appearance, fouled away. Very light swing. I know Brendan for a long time, since he's 10 years old, I picked him out at a little league game, so that kid can pitch. The 0-1, strike two. He's coming back with another breaking pitch. Everything in my wallet, Tom. Everything I got. Well, it's not much there, though. Outside. Uh, it was the breaking pitch. But as you can see, I'm financially <laughs> embarrassed today. I think I saw some dust in there. You know, some moths flew out of there. Runner with a slight lead at first, the 1 2. Runner taking off, swing in and miss for strike three. Throw to second, they got him. Steve Simos does it again. Second runner of the inning to be caught stealing. And it ends up being a double play as Pagliuca strikes out and Cabral is caught stealing. And we will head to the top of the sixth inning. It's 1-0 St. Mary's leading the Hillers on HCAM. 
top of the sixth inning, seven, eight, and nine do up for the Hillers. Jack Breslin to start things off. Bo Glassburn and Pagliuca do up next. Or Ambersoni, rather. Pagliuca did pinch hit for Ambersoni already in this game. So more than likely there will be a, another pinch hitter for Ambersoni or perhaps a different Alex, one than Pagliuca. Yeah, I saw Alex Barker hook poke his head out of the dugout. But I can tell you, Jack Breslin can't sing as good as his sister. <laughs> <laughs> Line up and the pitch. Outside. Breslin reached on a single back in the third, but was caught stealing later in the inning. We've got the Lynn Cable in the next booth over, and uh, there's some groaning going on in there on that pitch. He didn't like it. I loved it. <laughs> no 1 0. Strike one. Alcock's been pretty efficient this afternoon. The 1 1 outside. Two and one. Cole Glassburn waiting on deck. He'll be playing for post 77 Legion. Alcock deals outside. I will have coverage, a whole lot of coverage of Ashland Legion baseball in July. Starting on the Eighth, they have several home games in a span of about nine days. Fouled away. Full count. Cole Glassburn heading to Catholic University because of their baseball program and their architecture program. Doesn't look like an architect to me, but that's what he's going down there for. Time called here. The closer, Connor Kelly, warming up in the bullpen. Wind up and the pitch. And this is hit in the air foul. Count remains full. Good battle here between Jack Breslin and Bobby Alcock. St. Mary's defeated Austin Prep to get in. Austin Prep was on the bubble for the Elite Eight. Line up and the pitch. Swing and a miss. Out number one. Alcock found the hole in Breslin's swing. Put it right there. Well, the Hillers trailing one nothing down to their final five outs. Now batting number eight, Cole Glasper. Glasper will step in. Alcock set to deliver. Outside. D3 action. Medway faces Taconic out in the Berkshires at the Lasher Park in Lowell. Oh. Outside. And now John Mulready, the catcher, will come out to have a chat. Alcock buried that pitch in on the hands of Breslin. That sent him back to the dugout. Cole, a contact hitter, not, uh, don't expect him to go yard. Set to deliver. Outside. One and oh. Excuse me, two and over. I lost track of the count. I thought it was three and zero, oh, but okay. Outfield playing pretty deep for Cole. There's a strike. Alcock 
o'clock deals. Swing and a miss. Two and two. Three and two, excuse me. Don't trust the scoreboard. Outside and Glassburn draws the walk. Bonnie Rubble down to first base. No speed, but they don't know that. That'll bring up Alex Barker Hook into pinch hit. Now batting number nine, Alex Barker Hook. Maybe Cole Glassburn can pressure Alcock into an errant throw over there. He hasn't had a hasn't had a pick over at all today. He's getting a good lead over there, first base. Swing and a miss. Oh and one. That would have been a ball. So one out runner on first for the Hillers. He might be too anxious up at the plate. Maybe it's just me, but it seems that Elcock taking a lot more time between pitches as this game goes on. Outside. One and one. Kids told me that if they're going to get to Alcott, it's probably going to be late in the game. Alcock deals, fouled away. One and two. There's trouble on deck for the Hillers. Top of the order due up next. Ben McKenzie. Hitter calls time. The one, two. Down low. Good eye there by Barker Hook. Alcock's going to at least have to go through the meat of the order one more time. He's definitely slowed down his pace, Alcock. Most certainly has. And that would lead me to believe maybe he's getting a little tired out there. Checking it first, and they got him. That is just something you cannot have happen if you're the Hillers. Cole Glassburn picked off. Well, I guess what's good for the goose is good for the gander as far as pickoffs go. The base running today for the Hillers has not been good. Well, it hasn't been great for St. Mary's either. Line up and the pitch. Swing and a miss. Strike number three for out number three. To the bottom of the six we go. St. Mary's leading the Hillers one to nothing on HCAM. Good crowd on hand here today at Alumni Stadium in Lowell for the Division II now, State Championship two. game between the Hopkinton Hillers and the St. Mary's Spartans of Lynn. And right now, things going the Spartans' way as they'll try to add some insurance here in the bottom of the sixth, up one to nothing. Colin Reddy, the second baseman, starts things off. Brendan Kelly out there and hits him. A hit batter. And for the fifth time in this game, the lead runner reaches, the lead hitter reaches for the Spartans. Look at how close uh, Ronnie Sheamus is at third base. He's almost right on top of the header. Kyle Willett steps in. Substantial lead over at first base. And there's a bunt. Strike one. Is that a strike or did he make an offer? No, he left the bunt down. It's a strike. <laughs> Can uh, Ronnie Sheamus shake hands with the hitter? Almost. The 0 1. Fouled away, and it got away, but. It that was off the bat, so I believe the runner's going to have to go back, I would imagine. No. No. 
I don't know about that. And I think that's what Steve Simos is talking to the umpire about. That was a foul ball. Why is that runner still at second? And I think I have think a conversation. the I, yeah. think, I would imagine the umpires are going to do the right thing here and send that runner back to first. That runner took off well after the foul off the bunt. They're not going to send it back. That is atrocious. That's a blatant wrong call there by these umpires. Now they may bunt the runner over to third base to try and get an insurance run. Unless the ball didn't contact the bat, which I thought it did. And this is up to Glassburn, throw to first, they'll get him. But the runner does advance to third. So Reddy over at third. And you can score that a sacrifice for Willette. Wow. I don't know whether Coach Simos is going to give this kid the four-fingered salute with first base open. The uh, infield is in all the way around. So one out, runner on third. And the first pitch to Jared Capilla is up high. Everybody's in. In there for a strike, one and one. He'll throw it again. Set to deal. Inside, two inside, two and one. Leg lift and the pitch. And this is up the left side. That'll trickle in a left field. It's a two nothing lead for the Spartans. An RBI single for Jared Capilla. It'll bring up John Mulready, the catcher. Well, insurance added for the Spartans. And this is up the middle, glove by the shortstop. He'll step on second for one to throw to first. They do get the double play, a six to three double play to end the inning, but it's St. Mary's leading the Hillers two to nothing as we head to the top of the seventh on HCAM. Hillers down to their final three outs, top of the order for Hopkinton. Ben McKenzie, McKenzie will step in, Bobby Acock has pitched a shutout so far for St. Mary's. Alcock uh, has pitched a great game, Larry. Yeah, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens at the last inning. He, he showed a great deal of emotion leaving the, the field last inning. We'll see if he tries to throw the ball through the wall at 100 miles an hour and gets off his game. But these are the guys you want to See coming up to the plate. One, two, and three. From McKenzie, Steve Simos, Drew Rankatori do up. Can the Hillers break the shutout? They need base runners like oxygen. This is hit in the air, right side foul. I had home run distance. And McKenzie did have a home run in the sectional finals against Westwood. That pitch inside, one and one. Almost touched his short sleeve there. Maybe he should have leaned into it a little bit. Take some lessons from Stevie Simos on how to get hit by a pitch. The one, one. Outside, two and one. A lot of groaning from the opposite side, but that was a definite ball. I agree. Maybe that'll rattle Alcock. The two one. Fouled away, two and two. Nobody's gonna give in here, Alcock or McKenzie.
left fielder playing in kind of shallow. Here's the 2 2. That's fouled away. Ben set up to see a breaking pitch right here. Count remains two and two on McKenzie. Wind up and the pitch. Just outside, full count. A big pitch coming up. Ball four. And the lead hitter is on for the Hillers. Steve Simos will step in. Runner on first, no outs. Hillers trailing two to nothing here in the top of the seventh. Ben McKenzie has had uh, less stolen bases than he normally has. Steve Simos has been hitting behind him, so they're trying to protect Stevie and not have him get intentionally walked. Checking at first, runner back safe. If you're the Hillers, I don't think you risk taking a big lead at all. You need to be extra careful here. And this is up the right side, gloved by the first baseman, but it's foul. Stevie uh, carried the bat halfway up the first base line. A huge break there for the Hillers. They are lucky that ball went foul. That would have been an easy double play. If anybody's going to get in the head of Alcock, it's going to be Stevie Simos. He'll call time. The lefty steps in. The 0-1. Checking at first. Runner back. Kenzie does not appear to be taking too big of a lead, which is the smart thing in this situation. Well, we've seen enough base running gaffes today for both sides. The 0 1 outside. Here's the 1-1, one, one. fouled away, one and two. If you recall this situation two, two years ago at the Greater New Bedford Vocational Tech game, Stevie hit a ball 402 feet, the dead center. Three feet short of going out. Maybe he can get a little revenge here. Maybe he can. The one, two, swing and a miss. Out number one. Simos was fooled by the breaking pitch. He just buried that one right at his back foot. True Rankatori will Blue step in. Runner on first, one out. The Hillers down to their final two outs. Drew had a couple of home runs on the season. Two nothing lead for the Spartans of St. Mary's. Checking at first, runner back. Hillers have one steal on the day. No matter what the outcome of this game is, we will have the trophy presentation. Wind up and the pitch outside. Trophy presentation will immediately follow the final out, whenever that may be. Certainly these kids will have some really good memories, a last a lifetime, playing in a state championship game. Wind up and the pitch outside. Two and O oh on Rankatori. The 
Miller is only with one hit all game long. Checking out first, runner back. And the lone hit belongs to Jack Breslin. Alcock deals, and therefore a strike. So to get me over fastball. All the rest of the Hillers teams that were in the playoffs are all done now. The 2-1, down low, three and one. Well, if I'm Ray Katori, I'm not going to be so quick to swing here. Alcock certainly seems to be getting a little bit tired. And despite the Hiller is only having one hit, there has been a whole lot of great battles by these Hiller hitters. Donnie Seamus, a sophomore on deck. Connor Kelly in, in the hole. Wind up and the pitch. Fouled away, full count. That might have been ball four right there, Larry, if he held the swing. A big pitch coming up here. Alcock uh, been eating up the inside corner on lefties. See if he comes back to it. Alcock deals, fouled away. Count remains full. Tom Nappy, Larry Sacklad, happy to be with you for this Division II state championship game between the Hopkinton Hillers and the St. Mary's Spartans. John Ritz on camera. And it has been a great pitching matchup and battle here today at Alumni Stadium in Lowell. Wind up and the pitch. Up the middle, back to the pitcher. Throw to second for a one. And that's all they'll get. I think that was a little bit conservative there by the shortstop to hold on to it. So Rankatori reaches on the force out. It'll be a definite pinch runner here. Ronnie Sheamus will come up to the plate. And it's up to him to continue the Hillers' season. Hopkinton down to their final out, trailing two to nothing. I don't understand this. Drew Rancatori is like a wounded animal out there, and he's on the base paths. There's got to be a reason why. Wind up in the pitch. Strike one. Alcock checks in at first, runner back safe. I don't think if the ball even got by the first baseman, Drew would be running. Wind up and the pitch. And there for a strike. And Alcock is one strike away from pitching a complete game shutout against the Hillers in the Division II state championship. Look for something from Alcott that Sheamus is not going to expect. He deals outside. Uh -oh. The Spartans fans didn't like it. 
One and two. I liked it. I understand they didn't like it, but. That was certainly outside, though. Alcock deals, fouled away. The battle continues. Feel the tension, Tom. Certainly can. All the Spartans fans have their phones out. Wind up and the pitch. Into the backstop. Thought we were going to have a souvenir for a yeah. moment. Somebody could have done the windows for me up here, Tom, before we entered, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Count remains one and two on Ronnie Sheamus. He's reached on an error and grounded out so far today. Runner on first, two outs. Alcock deals, outside. Not even close. Two and two. I don't know what Alcock is looking in at the umpire for. Not even close. Alcock delivers, way outside, full count. Sheamus gets on, Connor Kelly will get a chance to hit. One of the heroes last week against Westwood. Alcock walking around the mound. Something's in his head. I think he's pretty tired out there, if I had mm -hmm. a guess. Wind up and the pitch. Fouled away. Brancatori oh. was running on that pitch, obviously. Three and two. Well, that was home run power there, but it was fouled off. Full Six. count on Sheamus. St. Mary's first baseman keeping Drew a little bit close, was playing behind him. Wind up and the pitch. Swing and a miss. And that's going to do it. The Hopkinton Hillers are going to fall in the state championship to St. Mary's of Lynn. St. Mary's winning the Division II State Championship, their first since 2015, as they take down the Hopkinton Hillers by a final score of two to nothing. St. Mary's scores two runs on five hits, commits one error. The Hillers, no runs, one hit, one error. Larry, tough loss for the Hillers here today, but what a tremendous season and what a tremendous run it's been. Well, I'll just say you can't win a baseball game not scoring any runs. And it has been a great season. Uh, it was supposed to be a special one. It certainly was that. Coach Simos was right. They just ran into a juggernaut today. Gave up two runs. I mean, what are you going to do? Yep. Some situations are just out of your control, I guess. And they, didn't, they didn't get blown out, so they weren't embarrassed. Bobby Alcock pitched a tremendous game for St. Mary's. But the Hillers certainly have nothing to hang their heads about. It was an unbelievable season, and to even get to this point, it really is a huge accomplishment. So congratulations to the Hillers on what has been a remarkable season, and congratulations to St. Mary's on winning the Division II State Championship. Coming up next, we'll have the trophy presentation you are tuned in at Top Hopkinton Hillers Baseball on HCAM. Congratulating both teams on an outstanding championship game. 
At this time, I ask the athletic directors and principals from both teams to present the championship and finalist medals to their athletes. Now I call your attention to home plate, where MIAA Tournament Director Dan Brothers will present today's team trophies. At this time, I ask the coach and captains of Hopkinton to step forward to accept the Division II State Finalist Trophy. Congratulations on a great season. At this time, I ask the coach and captains of St. Mary's to step forward and accept the Division II State Championship Trophy. Congratulations on a great season. Well, there, it, there it is, the trophy presentation of St. Mary's. Spartans of Lynn are your Division II state champions. The Hillers falling just short here today. St. Mary's wins the game two to nothing. And that will conclude the trophy presentation. Congratulations to the Hopkinton Hillers on a tremendous season. They to even get this far, it is truly a remarkable accomplishment. The players certainly have nothing to hang their heads about. It was truly a very unbelievable run by the Hillers. Well, it's been a lot of fun following this Hillers baseball team all season long. And it concludes in the state championship game with a tough two to nothing loss to St. Mary's. Congratulations to the Hillers on a great season and congratulations to St. Mary's on winning the Division II State Championship. For John Ritz on camera, my broadcast partner Larry Sacklad, I'm Tom Nappy. We thank you for watching Hopkinton Hillers baseball all season long and don't forget the baseball coverage continues with Ashland Legion Baseball all summer long right here on HCAM. Thanks again for watching, everybody. Take care, be well, and we'll talk to you again soon.